Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 17.2 released earlier this week and iOS 17.3 beta one released the day after that. Both have been out for a few days now, and there's more features to talk about on both of them. We'll not only talk about new features since the iOS 17.2 is out, what's new video and the one for 17.3 beta one, what's out, what's new. Also, we'll talk about some latest Apple news, as well as the overall experience, not just my experience, but your experience based off the YouTube community poll. I've been using 17.3 full time. I used 17.2 full time before. And at the time of this video, we have 27,000 votes and 304 comments. I've used all of that information with your comments to determine what the overall experience is like. So we'll read some of those toward the end of the video, but there's lots of great information there. Now, Apple actually has a new support document going over things that it recommends as far as chargers. If we go to the document, you'll see it says identify authentic and certified Apple watch chargers. And it warns against uncertified Apple watch chargers as it says you could experience slow charging, repeated chimes and reduced battery lifespan. So it's actually showing you what to look for. Here's one of Apple's certified chargers, but as long as it's certified as Apple's sort of using their own technology and not Qi wireless charging, they also have a database where you can look up the actual manufacturers that have certification. So you can search the public database and see chargers from everyone from anchor to Belkin and others. So lots of good information here. I'll link this in the description. If you want to make sure the chargers are compatible with your devices. Last week and over the past few days, we've heard a lot of information about Beeper Cloud. This is actually for Android that allowed users on Android to use iMessage seamlessly with iMessage users. This is something that worked great initially for many people, but then of course was shut down by Apple as you would expect. Then Beeper fought back, figured out a way to get it working again. It seems to be going back and forth and I don't expect it to last long term, but it's something that I do think will have an impact on Apple where there could be more criticism having them to be forced maybe by the EU to open up iMessage where they weren't going to have to do that before. There's a lot of pushback with Apple not opening iMessage and whether you agree with it or not, it's something that may have got that conversation moving again. Now Beeper Cloud was a good idea, but I never really thought it would succeed as Apple tends to shut down any third party apps that sort of violate its security. And of course I would love to see iMessage offered everywhere from windows to Android and others just to have a secure messaging platform outside the U S most people use WhatsApp anyway, but inside the U S most people use iMessage with iPhones as it's over 50% of people have iPhone. So it's odd not to have it on other devices. And of course you have the green versus blue bubble issue. Let me know what you think of that in the comments below. Also to go along with this, many large tech companies now, such as Google, Meta, Nothing, Qualcomm, Lenovo, Opera, and many others are actually working together to try and force an open digital ecosystem. This seems to sort of be a move against Apple and it's reported by Reuters. So you can see here where they're trying to push for a general open ecosystem and that's okay to a point, but also one thing that makes Apple great is that they can really focus on their services and make them a little bit different than everyone else. So I'm not sure if that will actually go through, but again, with beeper and this going together, maybe we'll see that open sooner rather than later. Now, some good news with iOS 17.2 is it seems to stop an attack called a flipper attack. This was flipper zero, where it could crash the iPhone with a little device that you'd bring nearby. Basically it would lock up and freeze the device and then reboot it using some open source Bluetooth code. It would actually use a device and anything nearby. It basically would crash that device and cause it to go into a boot loop as long as it was nearby. That's been resolved with iOS 17.2 and another reason why it's probably a good reason to actually install iOS 17.2. As far as new features, well, one thing I actually missed or didn't cover in the initial iOS 17.2 is out what's new video is if we go into settings, then we tap our name at the top within iCloud. If we scroll down, go to show all, you'll see it says messages in iCloud. I covered that they renamed this, but if you go into this, there's actually an option here to sync now, which is really nice. And it also shows you how many messages you've actually got stored there. I have 46.73 gigabytes in my storage with 651,001 messages in iCloud. That's pretty incredible. I've had it forever. And I do have some messages from people in the past that I still would like to keep. I would like to see Apple maybe offer a way to offload some of these so we could store them locally, save some of the old ones and get rid of some of this storage. But 
Let me know how many messages you have if you're using iMessage. If we go into the App Store, Apple has updated the top where it says today and then gives the date of December 15th at the time of recording this video. You'll see this looks a little bit different and this is not part of iOS 17.3, but rather was pushed on the back end by Apple to show this information. So that's also available on iOS 17.2 as well and any of the others. So it's just sort of a new look for both of them. With iOS 17.3 beta one, Apple added back the collaborative playlists. This is something we thought was going to launch with iOS 17.2, but instead was pushed back. However, in those playlists, there's a new feature as well. If we go to my playlist here that I created, you'll see I have four different songs. Not only do we see who actually added them, but we also have some emoji reactions next to them. If I go into this song, you'll see we have an emoji here and it actually is animated. We don't see that elsewhere within iOS. So maybe a heart here, if I change it to something else, again, it shows who added the reaction. We can add a bunch of different ones and they're animated. So maybe we'll see this in messages a little bit later. Also, we can see who added this within CarPlay as well. So if we go back into photos, I saved a screenshot here and you'll see it here where we have CarPlay and it actually shows who added the collaborative playlist within CarPlay. So that's a nice little update they have there. Now this week we had a bunch of new releases as well. Let me close this here. And with those new releases, we actually had an iTunes update. And while Apple is getting rid of iTunes in general on windows, iTunes was updated with a security update. So if you are using it on windows, be sure to update that to version 12.13.1. Also, we got a beta update for AirPods, AirPods two, AirPods three, AirPods pro first generation, as well as AirPods max have a beta update to six, a three zero seven. Now you can enable this on one of your devices if you want to, but you need to have the developer options on your iPhone to do that. So if you don't have that, you'll need to have Xcode and plug in. I've shown this a little bit in the past, how to do this. And if you scroll down and you actually have the developer options, which I don't believe I have at this time, you have to go into those, enable it. Then you can install that update like you normally would on AirPods. We're not really sure what's updated in them yet. It doesn't seem to be much of a difference, but let me know if you've seen any additional features. I wish Apple would give more details on that. Also, Apple released iOS 16.7.3. That's something some people have asked me to cover. However, it's only a security update and you can see that in Apple's security website. So again, it covers a bunch of security updates with accounts and basically all the same things you get with iOS 17.2. So I would recommend installing it if you haven't already, but it's not anything major other than that. Now, as far as the next releases, it could be a while until we actually see a release. It's sort of a tentative date at this point. And iOS 16.3 beta two could come out around the 10th of January. That's what we had last year with iOS 16.3 beta two. We had it on January 10th. So we could see it in the second week of January as Apple's pretty much on vacation for the Christmas holiday, new years, and things like that. Also the public release last year released on January 23rd. So it could be a few weeks and we could see Apple vision pro sometime in January as well. Apple is apparently sending employees to Cupertino and Apple to learn more about it so they can train employees in the store. So we could see it sometime around that release with Apple vision pro and vision OS 1.0. So that seems to be about right. I don't know that we'll see an iOS 17.2.1. We didn't have one last year with iOS 16.2.1. So we could have something this year if they feel the need to push that. But so far there's no signs of that. Now, as far as the overall experience, iOS 17.2 in general seems to be very stable. Most people have good things to say about it in the YouTube community poll and Wi-Fi seems to be fixed for most people. However, if it's not fixed for you, there's actually a way to do that, that people are saying seems to work. So if Wi-Fi and cellular is giving you a problem, I would recommend going into your settings, going to general, going down to transfer or reset iPhone, then tap reset then tap reset network settings. If you do that though, it's going to wipe out your network passwords. So just be aware of that. However, it seems to resolve and fix a lot of issues people were having with connectivity with their network in general. So that may fix that issue for you and it may not, but most people say that the Wi-Fi bug is still fixed at this point. Also, some people are complaining of a brightness slider glitch where sometimes they move it. It doesn't respond properly. I haven't seen that myself, but I've seen multiple people mention that. However, the thing I've heard mentioned the most is when you're voice typing or dictating using your voice, it actually sometimes will just stop or Siri will turn off in general. If we go to Safari, then we say apple.com. 
it worked properly when I stopped talking, but it didn't stop exactly when I wanted it to. It should have continued and continued to listen. So this is apple.com we're looking for. And now it's continuing. So there's a little bit of a bug there that I think they need to resolve. And I've heard from multiple people that they're having that issue. Also, people are still having issues with the keyboard lagging for some devices. I haven't seen that issue. This seems to be fine. When I'm typing, it doesn't lag. The keyboard shows up, but some people are having that. The notification bug seems to be ever present at this point. I don't know if it's ever going to go away. It's still there, but hopefully they'll resolve that in the future at some point, but it's been there since iOS 16. Additionally, there's that wallpaper bug that's also on iOS 17.3. If we scroll down, we'll clear these out, swipe up. It sort of dims in the background. I'm not sure you can see that, but you sort of have to oversaturate your wallpaper in order for them not to be desaturated on your main home screen. I've seen this over and over. Rebooting the device doesn't always work, and it's both on iOS 17.2 and iOS 17.3 iOS 17.3 beta one seems to be even more stable this time around, which is great, but still has those bugs I've mentioned already. So the usual bugs with notifications, wallpaper dimming, and the one issue I just had was when I was airdropping this wallpaper over to the iPhone 11, it actually wouldn't find it. So let me see if I can do that when I'm trying to airdrop, it doesn't find it at all. And even when it's in everyone for 10 minutes as far as the setting goes here this is actually on a different account everyone for 10 minutes it wasn't showing up before i actually had to use ios 17.2 to transfer the wallpaper to it so there's definitely some odd issues with 17.3 and airdrop at least for me however airdropping to my computer seems to work fine it's just to another account now recently apple did improve the zoom lens on the cameras of the iphone 15 pro and pro max they actually fixed some issues with focus where it's very fast to focus now if we move over here, it focuses, no problem. It seems to be nice and quick, but there was some issues for some people that seems to be resolved, but take a look at a few different photos and you can see what you think for yourself. They look pretty good. I don't notice much of a difference other than that, but some people have mentioned that they think there's some improvements overall on the iPhone 15 models. However, I haven't heard anything about the other models. Now, as far as the overall performance and heat, performance has been pretty good. I did run Geekbench again. We'll take a look at that in a moment, but just using it in general, I've had zero lockups, zero stutters, zero holdups from anything other than maybe the network, but that could be Safari and private relay. So in general, just scrolling with ProMotion, I do see some people mention it, but it does ramp up and down. So it depends on the app you're in and many other factors as well. On older devices, such as iPhone 11, it seems to be fine. And this is true of both iOS 17.2 and 17.3. I really haven't seen much of a difference there, whether that's scrolling, going into apps, opening up music, going into maybe browse here. Of course, you won't have the same speed on older devices as you do with newer, but in general, it's very usable. No difference from before, as far as I can tell. Going into the camera compared side by side with the iPhone 15 Pro Max, it actually went to the camera lens faster. So no issues really there. As far as the overall heat, well, the phone hasn't been getting warm at all with one exception. It got incredibly hot in my car. I have an Audi with a wireless charger. I had hoped that this was fixed. It's not, it got super hot in my car and stopped charging. So that's something where I just have to continue to use the USB-C to USB-C port. Maybe in the future they'll actually fix this, but it seems at this point there's something with that charger. It's just a Qi compatible charger, but it makes my iPhone incredibly warm. As far as the overall thermals, let's take a look at them. This is iOS 17.2 on the natural titanium, 17.3 beta one on the blue titanium. With 17.3 beta one, we have about 89.4 degrees Fahrenheit. And on 17.2, we haven't been using it, but it's at about 87 to 88 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, on 17.3 beta one, about 32.9 to 33 degrees Celsius. On 17.2 at the hottest point, we're at about 31.5 degrees Celsius. So pretty good overall, no complaints there. Yes, they do warm up a little bit when charging, but not really an issue. I actually talked about the 80% charge limit updates and things like that in my recent video. Be sure to check that out if you're curious about that as Apple clarified it in a recent document. Now let's go into Geekbench 6 and run this just right now to see what we get since we have both versions running on identical phones with different versions. So let's give it a moment and see what we've got. Now both benchmarks just completed and you'll see we have varying results. 
On iOS 17.2 on the left, we have 2,923 for single core compared to 2,911 on 17.3 beta 1. When it comes to multi-core, this actually varies as I've tested it multiple times, but we only had 6,895 on 17.2, where we had 7,106 on 17.3 beta 1. I've seen this as high as 7,300 or so, so it will vary depending on how many times you actually run it, but overall performance and general use seems to be pretty good. As far as battery life, let's go ahead and take a look at that. So if we go into settings, let's first take a look at how many cycles we have. As you can see, we have 71 cycles. Now this is only visible on iPhone 15 models still for some reason. Apple should add it to additional models, but they haven't yet. You can see my overall battery cycles here from both phones. I'll show you my 15 with 17.2 on it and 17.3 as well. This one of course hasn't been used as much, but let's take a look at battery life. So under battery, battery health and charging, I'm at 100% and after that many cycles and over the last 10 days or so, yesterday I had four hours and 15 minutes of screen active time, four hours and 58 minutes of screen idle time. The day before, two hours and 17 minutes of screen active time. So yesterday I actually used this a lot with maps and more and it's okay, but it's not great. I used 100% of my battery and actually had to charge it around midnight. On the same phone with iOS 17.2, I was getting through the day with about 40 to 30% of my battery life left. So I definitely personally had more battery on iOS 17.2. Now, as far as today, you'll see I've only used 50% and I'm almost at three hours of screen active time. Now Cameron sent in his battery life on iOS 17.2, so we can take a look at that as well. And if we take a look here, you'll see this is from 17.2. He had six hours and 43 minutes of screen active time and used about 75% of his battery life. That's actually pretty good. Unfortunately, you're not going to see 13 or 14 hours of screen on time like you would expect coming from an iPhone 13 model where we had over 11 typically. It seems iOS 17 in general just seems to use more power, but not necessarily more than iOS 16. So it just varies depending on what you're using and who you ask. But in general, most people say iOS 17.2 has pretty good battery. Now, if you're wondering if you should install iOS 17.2, if you haven't already, absolutely for the security updates and the things to stop all of those issues. Also, you'll get a bunch of additional features such as journal and many more, as well as new widgets. And as far as 17.3 beta one, I probably wouldn't install that at all unless you had an extra device because you're not going to get anything typically for a new update if you have bugs until January. So at this point, I'd probably hold off unless you don't mind having that or you have the ability to roll back using a computer and you have backups. So otherwise, I'd probably skip that one for now. As far as what you had to say, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the comments. William is so fast. Fabulous said, currently on iOS 17.2 using my iPhone 12 Pro. Wi-Fi and cellular connectivity have improved, however battery life has worsened, drains quicker than the previous iOS 17.1.2. Karen Ver Serif 5739 said, I'm experiencing new weird brightness slider glitch in Control Center. Whenever I tried to slide it up or down, it glitches in iOS 17.2 with iPhone 15 Pro. Calvin H4682 said, I'm running iOS 17.2 on my iPhone 12 Pro Max. No issues to report here. Browsing is fine. Apps open and close without any latency. No dropped calls, no network connectivity issues, and battery life is a bit less than it was under iOS 17.1.2. The 8 Travel Girl said, so far I haven't encountered any issues with 17.3 Beta 1. Phone was fine and didn't turn hot at all. All apps are running smooth and battery percentage, it lasts a long time. I must say this iOS is better than 16.1 iOS. I wonder if you mean 17.1 or really 16.1. I'd be curious. And also what device you're using as well. BLXZE841 said, I'm running iOS 17.3 beta one on an iPhone 13 mini, possibly one of the best betas I've tested in a while. Battery life is great. My phone stays nice and cool and there aren't any bugs in the software I have found yet. Overall, it's a great update and I think Apple has done a good job resolving bugs and issues in the software. So that's everything with iOS 17.2 and iOS 17.3 beta one for now. Lots of nice new features, some new updates, and it seems overall stability and battery life seems to be much better. However, battery life should improve over the next few days if you've just installed it, so give it a few days for that to happen. Otherwise, let me know if you've found any features I haven't mentioned yet in the comments below, and I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe, and if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. 
I'll see you next time.